We know that concave mirror is a converging mirror and focal length is the important parameter which decides the converging power of the concave mirror. So today we will determine the focal length of a concave mirror. All that you would need to perform this experiment are a concave mirror, few board pins, few erasers, mirror holder and a thread. We want to determine the focal length of the concave mirror in this activity. So for that we will make use of the mirror formula that is 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v where u is the object distance and v is the image distance. Now how do we determine the image distance and object distance? Now as we know that only for real images we can get them on screen and we can determine the image distance. Now we will have to ensure that the type of image that is formed by this concave mirror should be real and inverted. Now we also know the moment an object is placed in between the pole and the principal focus. So if the object lies anywhere here then what happens you get a virtual erect image. So that is not going to work for us. So we have to ensure that we place an object beyond the principal focus anywhere maybe between principal focus and center of curvature or beyond center of curvature. So any place beyond this principal focus would do. Now you might ask that I do not know the focal length of this mirror. So for that matter what we do is we say that to perform this experiment you place the object considerably far away from the mirror so that you know that it is beyond the principal focus. Now what happens when the object is placed here let's assume beyond the center of curvature. So what happens the rays of light parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus again the rays of light which passes through the focus goes parallel to the principal axis after reflection and then you get an inverted image like this real and inverted image. So in this activity we will place one pin for object and we will take another pin to determine the position of this image. Image. So let's see how we do it. First of all you fix the thread on the table which will act as our principal axis. Now you take the mirror, the concave mirror, put it in the mirror holder and place it on this thread. Now the object. So this is what we will take as an object. We take a board pin placed over an eraser. Now we have marked the eraser green just to uh, distinguish it as an object. Now the question is where do we place this object? Now one important thing that we know that in case of a concave mirror when the object is placed at the center of curvature at this point where is the image formed? The image is also formed at the center of curvature. So basically for an object at center of curvature you get a real inverted same size image at the center of curvature. So basically what we can do is we will move this object on the principal axis and try to find out that point where we get an inverted image of same size as that of the object. So let's see how do we do that. Now when you try to view the image for the object in this mirror you might need to adjust the height of the mirror as well as the object. So for that what we do we place additional erasers below to increase the height of the mirror as well as the object. Let us now try to locate the center of curvature. So for that what we need to do we place the object here. Now if you see on the mirror you must be able to see an inverted image. Now as you move the object what you have to actually observe is you have to place your line of sight along this line of principal axis. Close one of your eyes and then try to observe the tip of this pin and you have to observe or you have to find out that point where the tip of this pin should coincide exactly with the tip of the image which you see on the mirror. So for that we move it gradually and try to find out that point. Now you might reach a point something like this where you see that the tip of this 
pin and the tip of the image they are coinciding with each other but the moment you nod your head from left to right you see that both of these are not moving together that means either the object pin is moving slower than the image or the image one is moving slower but they are not moving together as you nod your head from left to right so if this is not happening so you have not arrived at the right point in fact this error is what we call as parallel error in optics so it is very important to remove parallax before you take any reading so that means this is not our center of curvature so let us try to find out the point so again we will change the position of the object And finally you reach this point where you see the tip of the object pin and the tip of the image pin coincide also as you move your head from left to right they are moving together so this point is the perfect point so this is the center of curvature now that we have located the center of curvature let us try to measure the distance of center of curvature from the pole So we see that the center of curvature is at a distance of 35.5 centimeters from the pole. What do we call the distance of center of curvature from the pole? We call it radius of curvature and which is denoted by R. So this radius of curvature is 35.5 centimeters. And we know that the focal length is always half of the radius of curvature. So this value would be 17.75 centimeters. So this is an estimated value of focal length of this concave mirror. We will place the object somewhere else, maybe beyond the center of curvature. Then we will again try to find out the image distance and using object and image distance, we will calculate the focal length using mirror formula. And then we will tally if the value that we obtain is same as this value. Place the object beyond the center of curvature. So we will take it more far away. So let's place it somewhere here. Now what's going to happen? So if you look at the ray diagram, when you place an object beyond the center of curvature, the image that is formed is real inverted and it is formed between the center of curvature and the focus. Right? So that means the image will be formed somewhere here. So how do we locate the position of the image? For that we make use of this image pin. So a similar setup with erasers and board pins. Just that I have colored it red to keep it separate from the object pin. And also I have placed a small piece of paper at the tip of the pin so that it becomes easier for us to find out if it is coinciding with the image of this pin. So now what you have to do, please understand this very carefully that on the screen you will have to coincide the tip of this image pin, the one with this paper. So this one has to coincide with the image of this one. So that's very important because otherwise because now on the screen you might see image of this, image of this. But what you need to do, coincide this with the image of this. Now that we have placed the object beyond center of curvature and we are able to see an inverted image of the object on the mirror. So now what we need to do is we will introduce this image pin. Now in image pins the speciality is that we have put a small bit of paper at the top so that we are able to distinguish it from the object pin. Also, you might be surprised to see that this is the height of this is very high. Why is it that? So that the image which we see on the mirror that is appropriate because if you adjust the height accordingly such that the tip of this should be able to meet the tip of the image of this pin. So now what we do is we move this pin. 
Now please make sure that throughout this step too, you should not disturb the position of the mirror and the position of the object pin. They will remain the same. So all you need to change is the position of this image pin. And you say you will gradually arrive at a point again where the tip of this pin will meet exactly the tip of the object pin that is the tip of the image of this pin now this this might be confusing for a lot of people because right now on the mirror you are able to see the image of both the image pin and the object pin but what you need to do is you will have to coincide the tip of the image pin that is this pin with the image of the object pin so this is very important so just see this now once you arrive at this point the moment you nod your head from left to right or right to left what happens the tip of this image pin and the tip of the image of the object pin both of these move together from left to right which says that we have arrived at the point where image is formed so what does this setup tells us that this is the position of the image when the position of the object is this so now that we have found the position of the object and the image let us try to calculate u and v so the distance of this pin the image pin from the pole would give the image distance and the image distance here comes out to be 28.6 and what about the object distance that would be the distance of this object pin from the pole so the object distance comes out to be 48.5 centimeters so we find that the image distance is 48.5 centimeters the image distance is 28.6 centimeters so what would be 1 by u that is 1 by 48.5 which comes out to be 0 0.0206 what would be 1 by v that is 1 by 28.6 which comes out to be 0 0.0349 so what would be f f using this formula so you have 1 by u you have 1 by v so f will come out to be 17.99 now similarly in this case what is f it is 17.99 centimeters now if we try to compare it with the approximate value of f we had which we had estimated before what do we see it was approximately 17.75 so both the values are comparable now in order to get accurate values what you have to do is you will have to repeat this entire experiment to get multiple set of readings so we would say that you should take at least three to four set of readings and then find out the values of u and v for each of them and f for each of them and then you can take the average value of f to get the exact focal length of the concave mirror I hope you enjoyed the video and also learned the process of calculating the focal length. Share and like the video, subscribe to our channel to get daily updates. Thank you.